Well, hello everyone. I am Matt Williamson. How is everyone this fine day? I want to talk Cliff Kingsbury here a little bit right off the bat. Um, my initial thoughts were, eh, I don't know that he's for the Steelers, to be honest with you. So here's what we know about him is he was a head coach at Texas Tech with Patrick Mahomes, by the way, and basically was a 500 coach there in the Big 12. I mean, I know Pat Mahomes then was not the player he is now. Of course, he was a work in progress that came into the NFL and sat for a year, but he's still an immense talent. And you would think that you could win a lot of games at Texas Tech with Pat Mahomes. Then he goes to the Cardinals. And if you remember, the year before Kingsbury arrived, they drafted Josh Rosen very high, in the top 10. And he was terrible as a rookie. And therefore, they earned the first overall pick. And he convinced them to take Kyler Murray and move on from Rosen after one horrible year. They turned him into a second-round pick, sent Rosen to Miami. And that ended up being the right choice. I mean, the fact that you got a second-round pick out of Rosen, who ended up being terrible, great. Now, that doesn't mean Kingsbury's a genius or an idiot or any of the above. But... Going to Kyler was the right move, and he wanted more of a – it's a little bit like the Fields-Williams situation in Chicago right now. Like, well, the, I want the, the the shiny new thing, you know, the, 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 the big-time prospect. But they also wanted the wheels. I mean, they wanted he, – he wants a running quarterback that can take care – you know, take advantage of space. But he was not a successful head coach for the Cardinals, and frankly – I don't really care, Texas Tech and Cardinals, if he was a great winning head coach or not. The Steelers aren't bringing him in to be a head coach. Maybe he is a offensive guru mastermind, and that's what he is. And that's what the world, you know, where his niche in this world is. And that's great. I mean, we don't, <laughs> nobody here wants him to be the head coach. He maybe just be a coordinator. But his offense, I didn't love. Uh, and, one of the things it was known for, like they had DeAndre Hopkins at that time, and Hopkins would always line up in the exact same spot. You know, like Peyton Manning did that with Wayne and Harrison, et cetera. But that's because he was so smart. He wanted to wait late in the down to read the defense like a poker player and see how they reacted. Where this was just a more of a simplistic passing game where it wasn't a real – they played a lot of four receiver sets, a lot of four receiver sets. Didn't feature the tight ends until the end. A lot of static before the snap stuff where they weren't a lot of movement in motion. But he does have a good reputation. He's interviewing at several spots. So I'm not dismissing that he could be good for the Steelers. Just what I've seen, I don't know if fits this team all that well. Folks, with the NFL playoffs here in the NBA season in full swing, Bet Online has you covered with all the up to second odds, news, scores, with additional odds, lines, and trends and info on both desktop and mobile. You can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, all caps, to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. And we are going to break down some statistically Steeler passing game stuff this past year. And a lot of it's not good, as you can probably imagine. So these are as a whole. The Pittsburgh averaged just over 200 passing yards per game, 201.2. Only the Panthers, Giants, Jets, and Patriots were lower. That's not the company you want to be keeping at all. But they did run the ball a lot, as we talked about yesterday. Only seven offenses had a shorter average depth of target than the Steelers. That's not necessarily good or bad. You know, I mean, you can be a highly efficient, quick hitting passing game and be the best offense in the league. But I don't love the sound of it either. You know, the shortest average depth of target than only, you know, this, this, only seven offenses were shorter. A 53.1% of all Steeler passing yards came after the catch. Just five offenses got a higher percentage of their passing yards after the catch. 
This one, I think, is a little bit of a misnomer because a couple monster gains by Pickens. After the catch, to me, is as much a quarterback stat as it is a receiver stat. And maybe it's even more of a coordinator stat than anything. Like, the Niners every year lead the league in yards after the catch by design. And they also go get really good after the catch receivers. I do believe, including Deontay, the Steelers have good after the catch receivers. I don't think the scheme, although it was much better than last year, lended itself to after the catch stuff. I mean, last year was all go routes, which you're not going to catch, do much after the catch and a lot of comebacks and stopped, you know, shoulder square to the line of scrimmage as opposed to hitting people in motion. So we saw more of that, but the fact I would almost rather that they had more air yards than after the catch yards, you know, in terms of completions, but whatever. This is important. Only 10 offenses began their drives with worse average starting field position than the Steelers. Field position is unbelievably important. You know, if you can't, it's hard to crank out points if you have a longer distance to go, if you have to create an extra first down every drive. This has to change. The Steelers use play action on 15.1% of their dropbacks. Only one offense used play action less. That's been making me crazy for half a decade now. Like, that has to change. Okay, Ben didn't like it. I can live with that. But it's been every quarterback. And if you want to make Pickett or Rudolph or whoever's coming in here life easier, you have to do more play action, especially as much as the Steelers run the ball. Mason Rudolph averaged 9.7 yards per pass attempt this regular season compared to 6.4 for Pickett and 5.9 for Trubisky. In the wild card round, though, Rudolph was at 5.5. You know, did he come back to earth? Eh, we've talked about that. But yards per pass attempt for a player or a team is one of the most indicative numbers of wins and losses. Yards per pass attempt. Keep that in mind. 4.7% of of Trubisky's passes were intercepted. Pickett had 1.2% of his passes intercepted. Very, very low. Rudolph didn't throw an interception during the regular season. The Steelers' pass catchers collectively averaged 5.2 yards before catch per reception. Eight offenses were lower. Again, they're throwing shorter than you think when you really study the numbers. George Pickens and Deontay Johnson accounted for 1857 yards. That's 54% of the Steelers receiving yards and 10 of the 13 receiving touchdowns. Pickens had four games with 125 yard receiving yards or more this season, but nine with under 50. That can't happen. Pickens 111 or 1140 receiving yards were 16th most in the league. Johnson figured to finish the regular season with a touchdown catch in four of his final six games. Remember when he was allergic to the end zone? Not true anymore. 223 was Johnson's fifth straight season with 50 or more receptions. So yards per route run is an, another great way to really break things down to the lowest common denominator. Over two is really good. Pickens was a 2.25. Johnson was a 2.04. Calvin Austin was a 0.84. Allen Robinson, 0.77. So average depth of target, Pickens was at 13.5. Johnson was at 12.8. Austin was at 11.9. Robinson at 7.7. Yards per target, Pickens was at 10.86 compared to 8.24 for Johnson, 6.21 for Austin, 5.83 for Robinson. And then Pickens, we talked about after the catch before. Per reception, he averaged 6.6 yards after the catch, compared to 5 for Johnson, 4.4 for Austin, and just 2.1 for Robinson. He's not a good receiver. Okay, 57 wide receivers were targeted at least 75 times this season, including Pickens and Johnson. Pickens was 11th in average depth of target, so the team was low, but he was high. Johnson was 18th. Also, you know, those guys were getting downfield. They're doing their job. Johnson was 25th in targets per route run, and Pickens was 44th. Pickens was 18th in yards per route run, and Johnson was 28th. 
Pickens was third in yards per target. Maybe you should throw him the ball more often behind Brandon Ayuk and Nico Collins, while Johnson was 31st, which isn't bad. A lot of good receivers out there, but he was third in yards per target. And in yards after the catch per reception, Pickens was fifth and Johnson was 21st. Let's wrap this up with a little bit of Fryermuth stuff. And yeah, maybe we'll keep Fryermuth for tomorrow because I want to correlate that with my article about Fryermuth. So we'll talk about Fryermuth in the passing game, running backs in the passing game, running or the run game in general. And we got lots of stuff to talk about. I'm assuming we will have more offensive coordinator news here coming forward. So that's a wrap for today. Uh, thanks so much. We were presented by Bet Online, and we thank them for their sponsorship as well. So take care.